Hi folks, it's Steve here from Analytics in Action. What I want to do today is give you a demo on how to create cluster models using the SQL Server um, data mining add-in for Excel. Um, so the main reason why you want to use a um, or develop a, a clustering model is really to group records that have, are similar. Um, they have similar attributes or they have similar a similar behavior. And this um, really helps a lot with understanding large, complex data sets. Uh, it can also help with um, um, as an input into actually another model. So quite often people will, will run clustering models on a, a data set, then use those clusters as, a, uh, as an input into, um, say, a, a predictive model such as a neural network or a, or a decision tree. So, what I'll do is just jump straight into how to uh, create a cluster model. So, first of all, I'll explain the uh, data set here. So, we've got some uh, a data set here, and it um, basically profiles some customer information. Um, and so, we've got information about the sex of the uh, of the patient, the age, the, the uh, general sort of sickness they have, and, and their race. And what we want to do is actually develop some uh, some clusters to understand are there some general groups of customers within this, um, within this data set. So the first thing you need to do is jump into the data mining uh, add-in within Excel 2010. I'll just assume that you've um, got that installed. So once you've got um, you're in the data mining add-in, you want to highlight the data set and then what we'll do is create a data mining data mining structure. So go across to the advanced tab, create data mining structure. There we go. Since we've already highlighted the data set, it, um, it pre-selects it there. Click next. And then we, what we do here is identify the, um, the columns of data that we want to include in the model. So um, since we've already selected it, it um, has highlighted those four columns. We, if there are some columns in there we don't want to select, we could use this um, drop-down box to, uh, to deselect them. So if there's something like, say, a, um, a unique identifier for the customer, you can put it in as a, uh, as a key. But uh, there, um, having them all set as includes, fine. Click Next. So what we can do here is hold out some of the data for a um, for testing. Uh, in, with Cluster models, this isn't really applicable um, as we're developing a um, basically um, a cluster for these customers, and there isn't actually a um, hard or fast rule. So it's not like a uh, many predictive models, such as um, some of the other demos have done, such as whether a customer has in the past has attended a marketing event or, or not attended a marketing event. This is developing um, cluster models are much more um, subjective rather than objective. So we can just set this uh, as the as zero for the percentage of data to be held back for testing. And I'm going to call this structure, I'll just call it cluster structure. And then we go finish. Now once we've created, created this structure, which is really defining the data that's going into the model, we can go off and actually create the um, the model. So this process, creating the data mining structure is really the first step in any um, um, data mining um, task within uh, SQL Server. So now we're going to go add a model to the structure, so we'll add a, a cluster model. So we'll click next, so we've identified the, uh, the structure there. Next now. So now I've got the choice of what sort of algorithm we want to include. And the within SQL Server, the um, the clustering algorithm is not surprisingly called clustering, so Microsoft clustering, click yes. Um, I won't go into the any of the advanced parameters in this um, demo, but there's all sorts of um, advanced um, sort of parameters in which we can tweak um, these clustering models. But we'll just use the defaults for the moment, then we click next. Um, okay, select the columns, so we've pretty much done this, we've got a row index as the key, so I just created that itself. Now we'll click next, model name, or just call it cluster model one, and then we'll click finish. And we'll go off and um, slip the data back to the uh, analysis services and create the model. So this is what we get now. So we've got a, um, 
this is the sort of default view, but we've also got the option to copy this to uh, to Excel. Um, I'll just hop. I won't bother about doing that at the, that at the moment. Um, I'll just walk through this um, this view that we've got. So essentially, what we um, end up with are a couple of different um, a couple of different tabs here. And essentially, what these tabs allow us to do, I suppose, it, perhaps two core things. It allows you to profile an individual cluster, but it also allows you to look at the similarity, uh, how that cast, that uh, cluster. Uh, what that cluster looks like in relation to other clusters. So what we have here is a, um, a cluster diagram that basically um, identifies the similarity between the clusters. So we can um, use the slider on the left-hand side to identify the strongest links. So these are the links in which the uh, customer, these two clusters are the most similar. Or we can go up to the other end, all links here or we can go into the slider and see, okay, which ones are the most distinct. So we see that this cluster down here, cluster one, is the most distinct uh, because it's the last one to actually have a line going through it. So the strength of the line indicates the similarity to other clusters. And we can play around with looking at the various attributes within that population to understand the similarity there. So that how it allows you to give, gives you sort of the big picture in terms of how these clusters relate to each other. Um, I find this cluster profile tab perhaps one of the more um, more useful ones because basically what it does is it tells you one, you know, how many clusters are there, and it's uh, in this model it's uh, created seven seven clusters, and basically you can look at how the population as a whole versus the um, versus the individual clusters. So if we look at say cluster one, we can see that it's a got a there are ninety rows of data in it, so 90, um, 90 patients. And we see, by clicking on that, we see that it's it's broken, it consists of all diabetes. Um, all of the 90 patients in there have diabetes. We also see that they're um, also all Polynesian and they're all female. So that probably explains why, when we go back to this cluster diagram, why this cluster one really stands out, because it's a very, almost like pure, cluster. Um, but we can look for each at each of the uh, various clusters. So again, cluster three consists of fractures, a bit like cluster four. Cluster four also consists of fractures, but we see that the key difference there is that cluster three consists of Polynesian versus the cluster four consists of European. Um, and also have differences of male and female, and we have differences in age there. Um, Moving on to this next uh, tab, essentially all this does is say, say so what's the probability within that cluster of uh, of that attribute? So, for example, we see probability of within uh, the whole population. So we can actually again slip back down to a particular cluster. So cluster one, we see that yep, yeah, it's very highly skewed towards diabetes, highly skewed towards female, highly skewed towards Polynesian. That in itself is useful, but one of the, the problems is that, like cluster, th say, three and four, you, there can be, um, just because it has a high probability for that particular attribute, doesn't mean that it's the only cluster that has a high probability of that attribute. And I think from memory, cluster three and cluster four had, yeah. So, for example, this has a high, uh, cluster four has a high probability of fracture, plus cluster three. So it's sort of useful in understanding the cluster, but it, just remember it doesn't actually make it identify distinctive features of the cluster. And this is where this next tag, cluster um, discrimination, um, becomes very handy. So you can look at, say, cluster one, and you compare it to, you can compare it to its complement, which is basically the rest of the population. So this is the complement of cluster one here. So we see that cluster one very highly skewed towards having diabetes, but the rest of the population doesn't have um, much uh, much diabetes. And, uh, so that I find this um, tab and perhaps the cluster profiles tab perhaps the two uh, two most useful tabs in the uh, so uh, in the uh, uh, to actually understand these clusters. Um, and as mentioned before, you can um, export these. To, uh, to Excel 
as well. So really, that's um, the key, um, the key sort of, um, uh, I suppose, the the key views within the uh, cluster analysis. Um, so again, this is what just what I exported. Once you export it, it's, it's really easy to obviously do things like rename it. Uh, you can give it a meaningful, meaningful name. Uh, so once we've um, actually created the model, we've then um, got the uh, got the ability to actually basically score that. Um, the model against a uh, data set. So, again, if we select the um, data set and then go query uh, within the data mining uh, tab, click next. We're going to select the model within the structure and click next again. Got the uh, data, data range already selected. Okay, we're going to look at the, uh, the inputs um, for the model. That's fine. Go next. So we're going to add an output, and that output is going to be the cluster. So all we need to do is um, pretty much name the uh, the column. The column function is not going to apply any of the probability or distance information, so we just leave it set on none. Click OK, next, append uh, to the input data. So basically this means that we're going to put the, um, the cluster name next to each row of the data. And then we click finish. So now it's scored the uh, basically applied the cluster name next to the data set. So if we then, for example, just go um, data filter and look at that cluster one, which we know, um, which we we're looking at before, we see that cluster one is uh, you know consists of uh, people with diabetes um, and the Polynesian. So that's essentially sort of um, cluster analysis for you. Um, pretty handy uh, technique, like I saying, often used in conjunction with other predictive model and, um, predictive modeling techniques as a uh, as an input to uh, to models. Um, yeah, so I hope you found that useful. Um, if you did find it useful, it might be worth um, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, I try and do. Um, uh, demos every every week or two so um, that way you'll get alerted when a new one comes out the other option is to go across to my uh, website which is analyticsinaction.com and uh, have a look around there i've got stacks and stacks of information on uh, things like uh, uh, predictive modeling uh, analytics also got lots of information about um, data integration particularly um, integration services. Uh, you might, if you're involved in uh, data mining and, and predictive modeling, integration services is a really, really handy tool. Um, it allows you to uh, very efficiently and effectively manipulate data. And a lot of data mining projects, about 80% of the time is soaked up with um, data manipulation. So um, I've got um, some another tab here on uh, some suggestions on how to learn integration services and how the various uh, YouTube videos on integration services that I've done all fit together. So um, definitely go across and have a look and um, and hope um, hope that was useful today.